Welcome to Courageous Conversation with Teresa W. Gamble, powered by Concierge Resource Professional Consultant. Courageous Conversation is a diversity, equality, exclusive initiative. It's a gracious space for a meaningful discussion about culture, life, business, work, learn, live, worship, and play. It's an audio psychopedia to design, bridges, cultures, and generational gaps. Through active listening and action-oriental changes toward liberation for all. Greetings and welcome everyone. This is your host, Teresa W. Gamble of Courageous Conversations. Today, we're going to launch our series, Learn Life Series. This particular topic series, we're going to talk about where are your social senses. The importance of integrating social emotional skills into trauma sensitive learning environments is the purpose of this series. Presently, the Florida government has passed legislation that is impacting what can be taught in classrooms when it comes to social matters to students in K-20 public education. To provide you some background of why social emotional learning is needed in Florida, due to the two significant legislative bills to prohibit social emotional learning in the state of Florida. First, Florida Senate Bill 1834 and House Bill 1557, Parental Rights and Education Legislation, Education Legislation prohibits and conversations in learning environments about LGBTQ students, among students, teachers, and administrators. Unfortunately, the Florida State Legislation Republican Party did not realize that some educators had students in this classification that will force undue stress and frustration to relocate to a state that embraces and support LGBTQ students and parents. School district leaders have been pivoting to leverage community partnerships to become collateral connections to be able to provide a safe social space for LGBTQ students and families. Secondly, the Florida State Republican Party also passed Senate Bill 148 and House Bill 7 Stop Woke Act that is to correlate with critical race theory being taught in K-12 classrooms. Consequently, Florida State Republican legislators did not conduct a thorough due diligence of the K-12 Sunshine State Standards curriculum that will show critical race theory is taught in college for college students who are pursuing collegiate degrees in the area of law. This legislation, Stop Woke Act, is designed to whitewash slavery, marginalization, disenfranchisement and discriminatory actions, laws, criminal injustices toward blacks, African Americans, brown, Latino, Hispanic, Hawaiian, Islanders, Alaska Natives, and indigenous people, that's our Indians, our Native Americans, that educators are being taught to do in professional development trainings in the state of Florida. Along with these Jim Crow 2.0 legislative laws, the Florida Department of Education has banned 41% of books for not aligning with Florida's new standards on prohibited topics. Department of Education in Florida reasons for rejecting these books include references to critical race theory, CRT, inclusion of common core, and social emotional learning, SEL, in mathematics. According to the local news station in News for Jacks, Digital Director Marilyn Vaca, she published a newsletter poll about the list of banned books and the approved books in April of 2022. The highest number of books rejected was 71% in K-5 through grades were aligned with Florida standards or included prohibited topics. These human rights violations in the state of Florida 
warrants social matters as a public health crisis. The multiple pandemics of health, economic, gun violence, and social unrest has escalated mental health issues in learning environments that continues to impact students' well-being holistically. According to youth.gov, President Biden passed the Safer Communities Act in June of 2022 that will fund school safety and mental health programs. Unfortunately, Florida government and Republican legislators has publicly disconnected mental health from social matters. That is the missing link in learning environments. We have no choice but to implement social and emotional learning that is in the cohort of diversity, equity, and inclusion practices. As a result of the Florida governor and state Republican legislators passing these control bills that violate speech to equal protection and due process rights. Personally, social and emotional learning, SEL, must begin with oneself before implementing this practice into a public learning environment. I ask you my trademark question, where are your social senses? This question is intended to provoke personal reflection through self-awareness, which is the ability to accurately recognize one's own emotions, thoughts, and values and how they influence behavior. Also, the ability to accurately assess one's strength and limitations with a well-grounded sense of confidence, optimism, and a growth mindset. Did you hear that? Self-awareness promotes growth mindset. Here is key attributes of self-awareness to guide your daily lifestyle. Identify your emotions. How do you react and respond to others? What do you say? Do you apologize when you do something wrong? Or do you deflect and walk away? Accurate self-perception. Are you being honest with yourself when people ask you a question or when they do something you don't like? Do you address it? Do you ignore it? Or do you walk away? Recognize your strength. Are you overbearing or overwhelming to others and they tend to be lost or they distance themselves from you? Or are you so strong that you won't allow others in to help you when you need when they see you need help, but you want to be independent and do it yourself? Self-confidence. Are you confident? Do you believe in who you are? And what you are purpose to do on this earth or do you have to receive accolades and praise and encouragement from others to gain that self-confidence self-efficacy this is one that many of us neglect or reflect from and that's our self-care do you make sure that you're putting yourself first before others and sometimes that is the practice of selflessness that we serve and we cater to others but we don't do the same mantra and practices for ourselves self-awareness is one of the five concepts of castle five that i have been learning and striving to incorporate in my daily lifestyle to give you a different perspective of Castle 5 and self-awareness, are you familiar with vision boards? I know many of you have attended some form of vision board party or activity or workshop. Well, I have discovered theoretical concept called the Jahara window. That's J-O-H-A-R-I that is designed to encourage self-awareness and communication about behavior by processing internal and external self-awareness by considering what is known to yourself which is known to me and what is known to others in four ways is open blind spot hidden and unknown I provided a link in an article that explains the Jahara window and a template so you can practice and create your own. The components of the Jahara window are open. It is a place where you will share information about yourself and what others know about you. 
Then next is the blind spot. It is information others know about you, but don't know about yourself. Then hidden is the area that represent things I know about yourself, but others don't know. And then lastly, unknown is your unconscious part of yourself. No one knows, not even yourself. The Jahara window was designed and developed by social and emotional learning and emotional intelligent research experts as a guide for adults to practice social emotional learning in the area of self-awareness and self-management. And this is important in learning environments because you are teaching others concepts strategies tools and tips and you have to incorporate some of your personal experiences in doing so but in, oh, before you can teach others we have to teach ourselves first we have to do assess and reflect our own actions our own behaviors and how we process ourselves and then how others see us Social matters is a part of our soul, of who we are, and when we interact with people in this world, no one person is the same. We all have differences and similarities at the same time. A social class, a political party, or any type of legislation cannot alter our life lived experiences. Individuals who fear embracing change in our ever-changing world will ne negatively cause or continue harm by groups of people they view as a threat towards such individuals. These groups of people who are being negatively threatened has the same right and the same choice to retaliate. But if they do so, the consequences of their actions will be far greater and will impact the people lives within their family, community, and social class. Social and emotional learning has always been in the learning environments in every industry. It just was masked with different names. We have all did customer service training. They have all taught us soft skills in that training. They have taught us hard skills in that training. Many of us has gone through ethics training for corporations. Many of us have attended or participated in cultural competency workshops, retreats, activities, and learnings for certification purposes. But unfortunately, COVID-19 exposed the identity of social and emotional learning through physical signs that has impact. Social issues are now flooding over in learning environments where people interactions are necessary. That's why I stated earlier, social emotional learning is a public health crisis because it's visible now. We can't see mental health issues, but now we can see them, we can feel them. They have an impact on where we live, where we work, where we learn, where we worship, and most definitely where we play. So my call to action to each of you is to take the time and read the article on the Jaharo's window. It's the self-awareness exercise and complete the activity of how you're open, your blind spots, your unknown, and your hidden. So you can be able to identify through assessing and reflecting your own emotions, thoughts, and values, and how to influence and improve your own behavior first before being judgmental about others' behavior. Then take the time and communicate your findings of your behavior with your family, friends, co-workers, your pastor, your mentors, to listen to their feedback, whether it's good or bad, to help you improve yourself. That helps with self-awareness and your self-management of not just for you individually, but how you are viewed by others. Once you've done this, then you advocate for others to do the same. This is the practice of social emotional learning. Our grassroots communities, from our main street communities, globally, 
needs this practice in their daily lives in order for us to strive and thrive together in every learning environment that we embrace. This is Teresa Gamble, your host of Courageous Conversations. We are talking about our Learn Life series, Where Are Your Social Senses? Make sure you do your Jahara's window, and I would love to hear your feedback. Thank you for listening, and stay tuned for the continuation of this Learn series on Where Are Your Social Senses? You have been listening to Courageous Conversation with Teresa W. Gamble. Courageous Conversation is powered by Carcier Resource Professional Consultant. Be not weary in well-doing. You shall reap if you faint not. Galatians 6 and 9.